Welcome to Made in Science, the official podcast of the University of Stuttgart. My name is Wolfgang Holtkamp and I'm Senior Advisor on International Affairs at our university and your host for this podcast. In today's episode, we welcome Dr. Emna Eitel, who is the course director of our international master's program, Infotech. Her educational background is in electrical and information technology with a special focus on telecommunication. Between 1999 and 2004, she studied at the University of Stuttgart. After her bachelor degree, she entered a double degree program of our university and Telecom Paris Tech in France. Among her key areas are information theory, coding for error detection and correction, and optical transmission. In her doctoral studies, also conducted at the University of Stuttgart, she explored channel tracking, thus addressing two of the toughest problems facing any wireless technology, that is speed and range. Today, we are looking forward to find out more about Emna's wide-ranging tasks at our university, the importance of teachers who inspire us, and what changes she wants to work on in higher education. Hello, Emna. Hello, Wolfgang. I think I want to start by congratulating you, because from what I heard, you have just secured a scholarship for international students from a company. Now, how was that possible in times of tight money? Well, times of uh, tight money depends on the sector you're working on. Um, actually, the program is offered by uh, the company Sony, which was not really suffering from the uh, epidemic situation. Uh, actually, the Sony uh, stocks uh, are doing pretty fine. <laughs> and um, yeah, the thing about it is to convince people of win-win situations. Um, and the thing started as I was uh, invited there with my family in an open doors event. And uh, some of my students, uh, from my Infotech students, dropped by the table and we had a small talk. And uh, I figured out that they are working there as um, uh, um, yeah, working uh, students. And they have a lot of trouble uh, to fund their, uh, their studies. Um, and the, the living costs in, in, in Stuttgart, which are uh, pretty high, <laughs> relatively. And uh, yeah, this idea have um, given rise to a meeting with the CEO of, of Sony. And uh, actually, uh, the, our international study programs at the University of Stuttgart and uh, more precisely at the Faculty of Computer Science and uh, Electrical Engineering and Information Technology, they have a perfect match uh, with the majors. So he was convinced and um, yeah, we secured a program now uh, promoting the international uh, students at our faculty for four years. Um, we had already the first uh, round and uh, now we are uh, collecting the applications and uh, evaluating them for the second round. And it's a wonderful thing because it fills me with pleasure and uh, proud to read the motivation letters and uh, to see that the students have clear targets and they're really committed to what they are doing. Um, yeah, and this gives hope. You are engaged in many fields of work at the faculty level. You are, as we said already, the course director of Infotech. You are in charge of international exchange programs. You are the equal opportunity officer at your faculty and you are involved in getting pupils interested in technical studies. For instance, at the Girls' Day at our university or at the Tri Science event. I wonder, where is the hidden or the open source of energy that you have to do all of this? The hidden source is that I'm really um, concerned by each of these roles and functions. It's, it's really something that uh, concerns me personally, Emna Eitel, <laughs> and uh, yeah, let, let me give you some, some examples, for example. So, you mentioned the course director of Master of Science Information Technology. So, uh, in, in 2013, as the position uh, was advertised, 
I was about to finish my PhD thesis, and um, at that time, all of the uh, activities, uh, interaction of uh, student exchange programs and so on, that attracted me at the beginning to join Stuttgart, um, all of the contracts were like expired uh, or expiring, and uh, there was not a lot of efforts in this direction. So I wanted myself, since I joined Stuttgart as an international student, to work on this. And uh, so I became the course director of the uh, largest international study program at the University of Stuttgart. Then uh, the second thing you mentioned is the international study uh, manager. Yes, this, um, this comes from my belief that a lot of activities or projects I'm carrying out can be also beneficial to other international students. Like I, uh, you mentioned at the beginning, the Sony program. So this is something concerning all of the international students at the faculty. And uh, for example, the welcome reception, this is something that addresses or that targets all of the international students. And we want to welcome all of them. And I know that this is important because some years ago, as I joined Stuttgart, it was to me an important feeling um, to, 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 uh, to be welcomed by the people here in Germany. And yeah, last but not least, <laughs> the equal opportunity uh, officer. Besides from being a manager, I'm also a mother <laughs> of three kids. And um, I gave birth to my two first uh, kids during my PhD thesis. So I know how tough it is to conduct research and uh, be a mother and uh, have limited time resources. Uh, so I know about this challenge. And after the third maternity uh, leave, as I uh, joined the university again, I, I was like, uh, I need to do something about it. <laughs> so um, I candidated for this uh, office and uh, I'm now the, the, the equal opportunity officer. And it's like, uh, I know about all the difficulties because I have made this experience myself. Your interest in Germany was raised by a teacher at your high school in your home country, Tunisia. How did that happen? And why were you interested in actually studying in Germany? Oh, so as a matter of fact, I was in high school um, at Pioneer School, and uh, which is in any case French speaking, so I could have studied in, in France. And um, yeah, I had this uh, philosophy teacher <laughs> who was really uh, convinced by uh, the idea that we need to learn uh, the German language, since it is the, the, the language of thinking. And uh, so he really encouraged me to, to learn the language and uh, to discover the culture. And uh, therefore, I ranked actually very high um, and with my uh, baccalaureate. Uh, but at the end, um, I made the decision to join Germany and not France. And um, I spent one year in Heidelberg to learn the, the language and I speak it um, uh, fluently. <laughs> and yeah, I settled down and married a German guy. And uh, yeah, that's how it came. You also said that the year in Heidelberg was really a very enriching experience during your first year in Germany. Yes. How was this so? It, it was really an amazing experience in the sense that you are, or I was there to, um, to discover the, the, the culture. It was not about learning mathematics and physics and all of that stuff as before. It was about learning the language and uh, practicing it uh, ev every day. And uh, I had this opportunity in Heidelberg in a very, very pleasant environment. I guess everybody knows the, the city. It's a really romantic city um, uh, with the castle and, and so on, with uh, the university and student life. Um, yeah, so it just gave the right frame to, to learn the language, um, yeah, the German language. And then at our university, um, you were also inspired by a professor at the time who set very high standards for your work. What does it take to live up to these standards 
And after all, the circumstances have changed in your studies when you were a student, when students begin studying today. Does this mean that the standards have also changed? Um, well, if, if I reflect on this, I, I think that the standards did not really change because the human being <laughs> does not change. It's, it's about the, the interest for, for different cultures. And uh, actually, the, uh, as I was in, in Heidelberg, I had to make a decision where to study. So I have a, a variety of cities um, with excellent universities as well, like Munich, like Karlsruhe, uh, and everybody knows these are also very good universities for electrical engineering. But I happened to attend an informative event from uh, my venerated uh, teacher, Professor Kuhn, um, who was at that time advertising for exchange programs. And uh, as I already told you, I, I, I speak uh, French also fluently. So I, I was interested in an exchange program with, uh, with a French university. And uh, Professor Kuhn was offering a double degree even <laughs> with the Telecom uh, Paris. So I went for Stuttgart uh, due to this um, exchange programs. And I think that these programs are still up to date and will still attract other students, especially German students from, from other uh, cities and, and states to come to study in Stuttgart. In addition to the university, the Stuttgart region has also some very important and internationally oriented companies and enterprises um, that are pacemakers in their own fields. And how far is that important for a selection for a student to come here? Well, this is actually like the engine to attract the students. It's not only about education, it's, lot, it's about also applying uh, education, it's applying the knowledge we gain at the university and uh, in cutting edge research and innovation and all of that. And the region of Stuttgart is providing the best conditions uh, to implement uh, the, the knowledge students uh, acquire at the university. Um, in times, however, of transparency and uh, digitization everywhere, this, this environment becomes really competitive. So this means even though we have already in Stuttgart a very strong economical environment, we still need to work on that. And um, we still need to uh, make the activities we do at, uh, at the university more visible to international students in order to attract students from all over the world. And then the other way around, for those who want to go abroad, how important are study abroad periods for university students? What challenges do you see for the internationalization of, say, your program at the university today? Well, I might be a little bit categoric about this, but it's, it's like a must have. I'm, I believe that students must go abroad in order to uh, experience the, the, the foreign cultures and so on and to, to um, develop an understanding for differing opinions, for differing cultures for, uh, and all of this. Um, so it's, it's also uh, some kind of social mission, you know. It's, um, we need to get German students also to go to other countries like, like yeah, India and all, or also developing countries. And um, so that they really believe that other cultures, other citizenships and so on are enriching us. Um, and, and they develop this um, awareness about uh, importance of internalization. I would also like to find out what your personal next steps are in your life at the university. Which direction do you want to take? I understand that you are very active in science management, but I kind of also heard that you have an interest in research and in teaching. Looking ahead, how do you want to balance those two? Actually, um, 
I'm figuring out many options uh, right now. Um, like you have said, I'm working in science management and there is still, there are a lot of targets uh, that need to be achieved. Um, I have a lot of ideas and, and motivation to, to improve things. And uh, I have, from my background as an, as an engineer, I'm kind of eager to optimize processes and I have a lot of uh, ideas, as I said. So as we talked about, um, it's not only about innovation and cutting edge research, we need to implement this also in education. So this means for me, for uh, the international study program Infotech, for example, to, to have um, new new majors and uh, new ideas um, how to adapt uh, all of the program uh, specializations to the uh, growing environment in, in research uh, and development and uh, so this is one one target um, other other targets would be at a different level for other international programs like uh, promoting the students uh, helping them to join Stuttgart uh, in this pandemic situation, for example, but also in general. And uh, yeah, there are other <laughs> targets like um, teaching again. <laughs> so teaching is something uh, that I like a lot. Uh, I used to uh, teach in the uh, module communications. Um, and yeah, who knows what the future brings? Maybe I want to um, and this with, with an inspiring um, message. So whatever uh, role or whatever function um, I would have in, in the future, I, I would like to have a, a contribution to, to the society and uh, a contribution to, to make the world a better place in general. Um, so this is something I read in the application of my students. And it's kind of, uh, they were teaching me and uh, not the other way around. So I'm grateful for that. And I would like to uh, try to contribute to the uh, society also. And along this very topic, what about diversity, equal opportunities and more female students in technical areas? From your experience, what needs to be done to broaden the situation? There are several efforts already and some of them are very successful. But what is your goal for this and perhaps also your contribution for reaching it? I believe that um, already my position as a female in management um, is giving a good example for young women and, and for girls in, in, in school to study uh, scientific uh, study programs. And from, from a different uh, point of view, I, I find that a lot of steps have been done in, in this uh, domain. And, 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 and also, for example, that we have a diversity commission at the university. Yeah, because it's not only about gender, it's also about uh, age, it's about people with migrant background. Um, yeah, it's, it's about diversity in general. And um, from my position, I, as, as equal opportunity officer, I, for example, participate in uh, scholarship commissions or in uh, um, recruitment for, for permanent positions and so on. And I help to uh, defend the rights of uh, minorities. Um, but I want to f work further on that. Um, I, I still think that the uh, way is long and uh, we need to do more about uh, this. Most of all, we need to raise awareness about the topic. Um, for example, give good examples of women in, in science, um, and like you are doing with this podcast, I guess. <laughs> and um, yeah, try to encourage young girl and uh, women to uh, also fight for this purpose. I'm myself conducting uh, surveys for highlights of uh, equality. And uh, my, my goal behind this is to highlight our achievements, for example, at the faculty in this direction. Um, so yes, I, I, in, the, in my future, I, I, I think I will um, continue working on that. Emna, towards the end of our podcast, we have uh, a segment called Moment 7. <laughs> We have 
collected seven questions that we would like to ask you. Please answer them as shortly as possible. Moment one. Spätzle or Maultaschen? Maultaschen. <laughs> Moment two. One thing you would change about the world. Starvation. Moment three. Do you have a museum recommendation for us? Um, art is everywhere on the street, so I love street art. Um, one of my former colleagues is doing very good. Um, his name is Schuf. I recommend his uh, uh, works. Moment four. The best advice that you have ever received. Stick to your dreams and uh, try. You are always a winner if you try, whatever uh, the result turns out to be. Moment five. The favorite place on campus for you is? The cafeteria. <laughs> I love coffee. <laughs> Moment six. If I could start all over again, I would do the following differently. I, I would, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, study computer science because it's, it's always about processing data. And moment seven. Please complete the following sentence. The best thing about Stuttgart is... It's international. Shukran, and thank you for this very motivating talk. We're looking forward to staying in touch and wish you the best of luck for your work at the university and beyond. Thank you very much. Uh, shukran. <laughs> and uh, in your, in your uh, language, Dankeschön. Vielen Dank, Wolfgang. <laughs>